Hello and welcome to another quick art lesson. This one is on the materials that I recommend for drawing and painting with pastel pencils. So I've started doing more and more courses using pastel pencils and they are probably my favourite medium. Very easy to pick up, literally. Very easy to learn, hardly any mess, especially compared to soft pastels. And the colour medium that I recommend all newcomers to drawing and painting begin with. Now over the last few weeks I've had a number of different emails about the materials that I recommend, particularly the paper surfaces that I use. Well the pencils is easy, I only use Faber-Castell Pip Pastel pencils. In my opinion they're the best by some margin and I know that I'm not alone probably in thinking that. So get the tin of 36 as opposed to 24, it costs a little bit more but if you want to do a range of subjects, landscapes, portraits, animals, it's good to have that variety. You don't need any more than 36 though. Now I'd also get yourself a couple of extra white pastel pencils. They don't have to be Faber-Castell. Um, it can be any brand and you'll get them on Amazon or any art store. You'll go through your whites very, very quickly. Now in terms of sharpening your pencils, forget about a pencil sharpener. The thing will drive you insane. Instead, use a craft knife and a sanding block. So don't waste hours trying to get a fine point with a craft knife. It's gonna take you too much time. Use a sanding block like this, and a little tip for you, sand your light colours on one side, your dark colours on the other. Now, if you happen to be made of money, and you've got £30, $50, go out and get this one. This is the Swordfish Scholar, you won't be disappointed. So, two turns of this, it will sharpen your pastel pencils, I've yet to break a single nib, it makes me very happy, which in itself is kind of sad. And that brings us nicely onto the paper surfaces. And this is where it tends to get a little bit complicated. You've got lots of different brands, you've got several different surfaces to choose from, which one do you go for? Well, the way that I think about it is to split everything up, the entire market, into four different categories of surface. The first surface we've got, if I bring it in, is what I call, or the first category of surface, is what I call the gritty surfaces. So these are a little bit like sandpaper. At one end of the extreme, you've got very, very coarse, very much like sandpaper surfaces and then at the other end of the extreme you've got a much more subtle much less coarse surface but it still feels a bit gritty my favorite one for pastel pencils is pastel matte by claire fontaine so this is at the subtle end of the scale so if you feel it you can just about feel that gritty grain to it but it is very it's almost quite uh, like glass paper but a very smooth glass paper another option or another example is by canson and that's me taunt I think that's how you pronounce it. This is meat on touch. So this is a much more gritty surface. I find this a little bit too harsh for your pastel pencils. It's gonna burn right through them. And it's also quite expensive. Now the beauty of a gritty surface is that it allows you to build up lots of layers. So three, four, five, six layers in, the pastel is still gonna to adhere to the surface. It's also gonna let you get quite a, a nice, smooth, refined finish. So if you're going to do portraits, particularly, say, a younger face where you want those smooth skin textures, a gritty surface like the pastel matte is brilliant. The downside is that these gritty surfaces, they do tend to be a little bit more expensive and you've also got to work your pencils in quite a bit harder than some of the other surfaces we're going to look at. So you tend to burn through them a little bit quicker. So just something to think about with regards to those. Next surface, I'm going to move right on from quickly because it's no good for pastel pencils this is velour surfaces so these will feel very different from anything else any other type of paper they don't feel like paper to be honest this has got a, a velvety feel soft fibers to them great for really soft pastels but for your pastel pencils they're just too hard to adhere to this you just can't get any kind of vibrancy with your colors you're not going to be able to layer them move those quickly on which you'll be pleased about because they're really expensive next up we've got an ombre surface so lots of different brands do an ombre surface this one is by claire fontaine again it's got a very distinctive grid like texture to it very uniform grid like texture so if we put some pastel down you'll see that grid texture hopefully coming through there now ombre paper is the oldest it's the most traditional type of pastel paper it's quite affordable, well, it's really affordable in comparison to everything else, and it's really popular. But I'm gonna say something quite controversial. I don't like it. I don't like it for pastel pencils. The reason I don't like it is that I find the texture surface showing through, um, I think looks a little bit unfinished rather than sketchy, rather than arty. 
you can get over that by working the pastel pencil really firmly into your paper. You know, but I don't want to work really firmly all the time when I'm doing art. I want to maybe be a little bit loose and expressive. I want to let some of the texture show through. It gives it a bit of energy, a bit of dynamism to your, to your work. Personal preference thing, don't let it put you off entirely. Do go out and experiment with Ongre, particularly because it's so affordable. And there's a brilliant artist on YouTube called Colin Bradley. He does a very reasonably priced pad of Ongre pastel paper on his website. Go and check that out. And that brings me on to finally, the last category of surfaces of the four, and that is the honeycomb surfaces. So this is a pad of Canson Mitant. So this is just the regular Mitant, not the Mitant Touch that we looked at earlier, the sandpaper. Again, this is fairly reasonably priced, maybe a little bit more expensive than your own grey papers. The reason I like this so much is that I think that that texture, that less or that more random texture, less uniform texture, when it shows through, it complements the drawing rather than looking unfinished. So for a loose expressive landscape, for example, it's perfect. If I want a slightly more refined feel and I don't want to go out and buy a gritty surface, I can use the reverse. So if I just pull this over, so the back of the, can the uh, Canson Mitant, you can see it's still got enough of the surface to allow the pastel to adhere to it, but it, you get a much smoother, much more refined feel. So if you were doing a portrait, for example, you wouldn't be doing it in blue, but you can build up with just two or three layers. You can get rid of all the texture below and you can get quite a, a smooth blend, quite a smooth effect. So I love the Canson uh, Mitant paper. It is my number one paper for pastel pencils. You can get it either as loose sheets or you can get these two pads. And that brings me nicely onto color. So the color that I go for is a mid-tone. So it might be a gray, it could be a brown or a terracotta. The most important thing is it is a mid-tone. The problem with the really light tones, if I show you one in this pad here, so this really light cream tone, even the one next to it, which is a bit more of a creamier color, is that when you lay your lighter colors down, and we're gonna to tend to work light to dark in pastel pencil, those whites and those creams and yellows that you put down initially are gonna be difficult to show up. So it's just gonna make your job that much more difficult to see the range of values throughout your work. The really dark tones, they're okay, you can work with them. Pastel pencils will cover the darkest tones. So you've got this one here at the back. This is a dark blue and you can see that still shows up. And if you put your whites on there, they'll show up as well. So they're okay, the darker tones. For some subject matter, um, particularly if you're gonna let the texture show through, they might not work quite as well, which is why I just tend to, as a rule of thumb, stick to that mid-tone range. If you get yourself one of these pads, this is the gray tone. So there's five different colors in here, five different grays. This is the best one to go for because you'll be able to use all the colors in there. This dark gray, mid gray, that's a greeny gray and this lighter gray, and then there's a slate gray there as well. If you go for the earth tones, the colors at the back are beautiful. I really like this brown. I like this um, olivey, uh, browny green color here. And then this is probably my favorite one, this one here. But as I say, the two at the front are gonna be difficult to use with your pastel pencils. So you might not get as much use out of a pad like this as you will do out of the gray tones. You could also go for the individual sheets if you wanted to. Canson do sell them as individual sheets. Just gonna be a little bit more work for you to put that together, maybe a bit pricier as well. And that really is all you'll ever need to work with pastel pencils. Your box of 36 Faber-Castell, the Canson Mitant paper surface in those mid-tones, and something to sharpen your pencils with, a craft knife and a sanding block. A kneadable eraser as well is the only other thing I would suggest. It works great with pastel, and it's as much a drawing tool as it is as an erasing tool. And this is why I love pastel pencils so much. Very quick, very easy to set up, the minimum of fuss. And that means you're going to spend more time drawing than you are getting things together and getting them out ready. So I hope you found that little overview helpful. This is my recommendation, remember, for pastel pencils exclusively, not necessarily soft pastels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, uh, hello and welcome to Hello and welcome to another quick art lesson. 
This one is on the materials that I recommend for drawing and painting with pastel pencils. So I've started get So I've started doing more and more courses using pastel pencils. They're probably my So I have started So I've started doing So I've started doing so I've started doing more and more courses with pastel pencils. They're probably my favourite medium now. Very easy to pick up, literally. Very easy to pick up, literally. So I've started doing more and more courses using pastel pencil. So I've started doing more and more courses using pastel pencils. So the pastel pencils themselves. Hello and welcome to another quick art lesson.